Fish discover water last. Hi, Dale Dixon here, Better Business Bureau. And yes, I just said fish discover water last. What does that mean? Well, when I was a kid, I always heard about the frog. Put that frog in a pot of cold water, put the pot on top of the stove and turn on the heat. What happens? Yes, the water slowly comes to a boil and the frog just sits there not realizing what's going on. The same can be said with a fish discovers water last. I think we in the business community had several years of a great marketplace. Money was coming in and a lot of people just didn't worry about what was going on in the surroundings. We weren't worrying about what was happening with our water, but the water continued to get dirtier and dirtier until it was too late. And then we realized that that water had become dirty, polluted. And we call that a crisis of trust. Listen to what was said in the Wall Street Journal not long ago. These are days of epic foul-ups, colossal crimes and rip-offs so grandiose they have plunged our entire economy into recession. Well, that's where we were at. Now, as we look at our surroundings and what's going on, we see the word trust a lot. It's why the Better Business Bureau exists. We're here to build trust in the marketplace. And we do that plain and simple by creating a trustworthy marketplace where businesses come together, adhere to a set of standards, and then we tell the world about those businesses that are living up to those standards day in and day out. And now it is more important than ever. Ethics in the marketplace are crucial. They're crucial for your survival as a business owner, as a manager in the marketplace. And that's why we want to spend these minutes with you talking about the importance of ethics and how you can incorporate a strong ethics policy in your company and really what integrity means overall. So come with us on this journey as we share a few stories with you about the power of ethics and integrity and how it can improve your business. It's all about making your business better as we work together to build trust in the marketplace. I'd like to take you to the World Economic Forum. It happens each year in Davos, Switzerland. At the World Economic Forum, business leaders, banking leaders, and government leaders all join together, talk about what's going on from a global perspective. And each year, the Edelman Trust Barometer is released. They've been taking this now for more than 10 years, and they ask the same set of questions about your level of trust in a variety of things, in government, in education, in healthcare, and in business. Now, when we talk specifically about the level of trust in business in the first part of this survey for the first several years, we saw high levels of trust in business, relatively speaking. Then all of a sudden, 2008, 2009, we saw this precipitous fall in the level of trust in business. Fortunately, after we got through the crisis, trust started building in business. However, 70% of the respondents in a recent Edelman Trust survey said this, and this is alarming, it should concern you too as an ethical business. Nearly 70% of people believe that companies will try to return to business as normal after the recession. That means, okay, the businesses were behaving badly, got us into a crisis of trust. They shaped up for a short time, but then our customers expect us to go back to business as usual. Now, I can just hear you th sitting there and saying, this isn't about me. I go to work every day intending to do the right thing. I work hard day in and day out to run an ethical company. And you know what? You're right. If you're taking the time to watch this, I believe that you are running an ethical company. However, there's this unique thing about human nature, and that is we judge ourselves by our intent, meaning we're setting out to do the right thing day in and day out, and so we judge ourselves. We wake up in the morning and say, I'm doing the right thing. The interesting thing is we're judged by our actions by others. Yes, others judge us by our actions, not our intent. So as we talk about ethics in the marketplace, it's important for us to most importantly think about our actions, not just the intent we have as we set out day after day. So as business leaders, Better Business Bureau is challenging you to join together with a community of like-minded business leaders to really raise the bar with ethics and integrity. And we see, as this takes place day in and day out, that those businesses that do that really find new levels of success. And that's what we want for your company. John Huntsman wrote the book, Winners Never Cheat. In that, he has a powerful quote. Think about these words. There are no moral shortcuts in the game of business or life. There are basically three kinds of people. 
the unsuccessful, the temporarily successful, and those who become and remain successful. The difference is character. It's easy for me to read quotes from successful people. What I would rather do is show you solid evidence of why your level of ethics and integrity are so important to your success. So we'll turn to Thomas Stanley's Millionaire Mind. It's a book and Thomas Stanley is the author. And in the book, Thomas Stanley set out to see exactly what made people successful. And he said successful people are naturally going to have evidence of that success in the bank account. So. He said it's important that we talk to people with a net worth of more than a million dollars. They looked at about a quarter million neighborhoods across the United States looking for people with that net worth. They identified a total of 2,500 neighborhoods and sent out 5,000 surveys. These weren't just any surveys. They were about nine pages in length, more than 200 questions, trying to get to the heart of what makes people successful. Well, as the survey started coming in, they received a total of about 1,001 surveys. 1,001 people responded. And out of that, 733 truly had a net worth of more than a million dollars. Thomas Stanley had his research project. As Thomas and his researcher went through this process of looking at the survey results, they found that the respondents identified five key characteristics that they tied to their success. Let's take a look at those characteristics. One of those characteristics was hard work. They talked to the folks and they said, yep, hard work is something that we definitely need. Next on the list, a supportive spouse. The respondents also said that they needed social skills in order to achieve a level of success. And then on that list, discipline. The number one thing on the list of people who responded to the survey said they must have in order to find success was integrity. After going through the results and finding those five key characteristics, Thomas Stanley and his researchers set up face-to-face -face interviews with some of the respondents. And they asked a few pointed questions, especially about these five characteristics. And they said, let's treat this like a report card. And if you're in college and you're looking for that GPA, and let's say you get an A for discipline, you have a supportive spouse, probably a B on your social skills, and let's say a, a B, I see on integrity, does that all even out to a 3.5 GPA, so to speak? The respondents said, absolutely not. You must have integrity. Plain and simply, you either have it or you don't. In fact, one of the respondents said, we became rich without compromising our integrity. In fact, we credit our integrity with significantly contributing to our success. Integrity cannot be averaged into an overall grade. It is pass fail. I'd like you to take a moment right now and write down your personal definition for integrity. I found my personal definition of integrity through the Better Business Bureau's Integrity Counts process. Each year the BBB recognizes companies that really set the bar for operating with ethics and integrity. In the past we had asked that people nominate a business and then that business would put together an application that was a three ring binder dissecting, really looking deep inside of a business into what ethics and integrity means. I was looking through the applications one year and I came across an application from a mechanic in Meridian. And on the cover were three words, think equals say equals do. Think equals say equals do, meaning what happens in my mind, in private that nobody sees, or what happens in the back office, out of sight, out of mind, is the same thing that I'm going to say, or the same thing that's going to be said over the counter to a prospective customer, or out in the field. It's the same thing that I'm going to set my hands and feet to doing. It's the same thing that the employees will be out actually doing in delivering products and services. Think equals say equals do. It's a powerful example of consistency. It's a powerful example of what integrity means. I encourage you to embrace your personal definition of integrity. Let people know what it is. Most importantly, live it out day in and day out in your company. I mentioned in the beginning that we are suffering a crisis of trust and it's because of a small number of businesses who catch headlines 
and really ruin it for the rest of us. And that's why it's so important for every business owner to go out and act with ethics and integrity to prove that really business is good because we believe business is inherently good. And there are a number of other numbers and statistics that show just what in ethics and integrity means to the bottom line of a company. Financial Times profiled high innovators. They found the top thing in common, trust. You have trust when you have high levels of ethics and integrity. A Watson Wyatt study finds that high trust companies outperform low trust companies, get this, by 286%. Yes, 286%. How would you like to have that kind of advantage over your competition? We see it in high trust companies. And then Fortune Magazine's 100 best companies to work for in America earned over four times the returns of the broader market, all tied back to this idea of having extreme levels of trust born of ethics and integrity. So how do we start moving from a crisis of trust to a trust renaissance? I'd like to leave you with three specific challenges that you personally can put into action and then take into your business. First, it's to make and keep commitments. I see this really as starting as a habit. You see the clock on the screen behind me? When you set that alarm clock at night, when I set that alarm clock at night, I'm making myself a commitment to get up the next morning. The question is, what happens when the alarm goes off in the morning? Well, if I hit snooze, I'm not keeping that commitment. If I go ahead and get up and get out of bed, I am keeping the commitment. So these start simply as small daily habits. Something as small as setting the alarm clock and getting up creates the habit. And then those habits carry out. It carries out to our families. It carries out to our loved ones, our friends. And when we make and keep commitments to employees and coworkers, it carries through the day and becomes a habit, ultimately carrying out and through to our customers and the people we serve day in and day out. So making and keeping commitments is step number one in building trust and moving from a crisis of trust to a trust renaissance. My second challenge to you is to stand for something or simply be a person of your word. I'd like to relay a story about Andy Roddick. He used to play professional tennis in Boise, but it was 2005, the Rome Masters tennis tournaments, and he was playing Fernando Verdasco. Now, I'm not a tennis player, so I'll relay this story to the best of my ability. But Andy Roddick was doing well. In fact, he was up 5-3. He had a 5-3 lead going into triple match point. Verdasco was on a second serve, and he appeared to double fault, meaning as he served that ball, it looked like the ball went out. Well. Roddick didn't think so, so he went back on that clay court and he looked down to where that ball had hit and he saw the ball landed inside the line, meaning that the call the ref had made was wrong. So instead of being quiet about it, Andy Roddick raised his hand and said, come look at this. And he showed where that ball was actually inside the line. Well, it was a game changer for Roddick because after he appealed, he went on to lose the game, the set, and the match. In fact, one sports writer said in the long run, Roddick is likely to benefit from the publicity that his act of integrity will generate. It's perhaps a bit too much to hope that others will start following suit. It's sad that we are that jaded about people with ethics and integrity, but it's a great story that we do the right thing even at risk of personal loss, just as Andy Roddick did. But it's a tremendous trust builder for our competition, for our customers, for our clients, for our loved ones, when we are a person of our word. My third challenge to you is to be transparent, be open. Take a look at this commercial. I'm Ed Whitaker from General Motors. A lot of Americans didn't agree with giving GM a second chance. Quite frankly, I can respect that. We want to make this a company all Americans can be proud of again. That's why I'm here to announce we have repaid our government loan in full with interest, five years ahead of the original schedule. That was Ed Whitaker, GM of General Motors. Now, listen to what was written on the front page of the San Francisco Chronicle the day after this commercial started playing. 
The $4.7 billion used to repay the loan came from taxpayers through a special escrow account set up to hold bailout funds. The government still has $50 billion invested in GM. Americans paid dearly to rescue GM. You'd think the company would be more upfront with them. As we challenge businesses to be transparent, to be open, it must be genuine. Faking transparency never works. Now, a great example of a company that's transparent is Domino's Pizza. I was driving down the road one day and I heard this radio commercial come on and it was a leader within Domino's and they said, we know that our pizza isn't that good, but we're asking for a second chance. Here's what we've done. I thought, wow, somebody saying, buying a commercial to say their product wasn't good, but they've changed. So I've shared this story a number of times in a variety of audiences and I always ask, has anybody in here tried Domino's Pizza since that commercial? And I'll always have a few people timidly raise their hands in the audience and say, yes, I tried it. I said, well, tell me, is it better? And they say, you know what? It is better than what it used to be. That is real transparency. When you own up to a mistake, when you tell people what really happened, and then you lay out what it is you're doing to fix the problem and to make sure it never happens again. That's the type of genuine, real transparency that we're talking about and that we see work time after time as companies build trust, turning a crisis of trust into a trust renaissance. It sounds so simple. It's hard work day in and day out as a business owner and we realize that. That is why we here at the Better Business Bureau are here to help you build trust with your customers. When you build that trust with your customers, you're building confidence in them and a confident customer is going to come back for more. We'd like to leave you with a few words from Stephen M. R. Covey. He's the author of Speed of Trust. It's a great book. I definitely recommend that you and your team read through that book as you think about building trust with your customers and with the people around you. Covey wrote, the ability to establish, grow, extend, and restore trust with all stakeholders, customers, business partners, investors, and coworkers, is the key leadership competency of the new global economy. Important words. We'd like to thank you for joining forces with a community of trustworthy businesses to turn a crisis of trust into a trust renaissance. We believe that Better Business Bureau accredited business mark is important and customers prove it day in and day out. Studies show people prefer to buy from a business that has adopted a set of standards and is held accountable to those standards. And that's exactly what a business has done when you see the BBB accredited business mark on the door in advertising. They're building confidence with customers, saying, we promise to be truthful, to be honest, to be responsive, to safeguard privacy, to act with integrity. That's what being a BBB accredited business is all about. We thank you for setting the high standard, living up to that standard, and truly turning a crisis of trust into a trust renaissance in Idaho.